Okay, so I see the presentation only here. Not here? Ah, also here. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> I tried to figure it out. <laughs> well, thank you for the introduction. I want to talk about now about a project we uh, conducted in Austria in the last years together with the Austrian Federal Railways about all those land cover, land ceiling, land use topics. And uh, we want to figure out the potential of those railway associated areas. So the land aside next to the tracks, uh, more or less. And uh, the idea was to develop a nationwide uh, and thematically and spatially high resolution data set for assessing the land cover of Austrian federal railways. We're often talking about, well, there is a huge potential and there must be a huge potential, but the question is, how big is the potential? Is there really a potential for different purposes, for biodiversity um, support, et cetera, et cetera? So uh, this should then be a kind of a basis for the analysis of spatial explicit and site-specific potentials. For example, can uh, railway infrastructure contribute to renewable energy development or in urban fabrics uh, to act as a kind of a a social hotspot for community gardening and, and association uh, to meet uh, somewhere in public. Also the topic of uh, the management of uh, invasive alien species and uh, potential strategies uh, aside using some toxic chemicals like uh, extensive uh, management, extensive uh, grazing strategies, etc. to overcome or to reduce. Uh, the negative effects on uh, biodiversity and, and other natural habitats. So uh, it also was the idea to provide it as a kind of a resource for future uh, topics like uh, in, in within another upcoming uh, UVP project, there's now a discussion about biomass potentials uh, uh, for all the material that was uh, or it will be cut uh, along the trails to manage uh, and, and to keep the tracks uh, free, but also for uh, biodiversity production. And uh, the presentation is split in two parts. One is the more uh, GIS, so geographic information system task, uh, where we want to create the basis. And then I want to present several case studies we have developed out of this data analysis. Uh, when you want to do a nationwide analysis, or it would be also a great idea to do this at the European level, for instance, it's always a question about, do we have data for that to describe it? And do we have data that are at the high thematic and resolution to, to give proper answer, not just to give a rough estimation of what can be there. And uh, so we did a, a comprehensive data research and you see here it is a mix. Most of them are provided by Austria. We have a very good open government data strategy in Austria. So in the last five to 10 years, many very high resolution data uh, um, released at, at national level. But we also use global data like uh, OpenStreetMap or uh, European data like the Copernicus data set. And out of that, uh, we have looked at in total approximately 24,000 UBB sites that are owned uh, by, by the Austrian Federal Railways, uh, which is 0.22% of Austria at least. Uh, we also separated the buildings from that we, because um, we wanted to have a look at, at the unbuilt uh, land and landscape. And uh, we designated 11 different land cover ca categories like forest, uh, grassland areas, agricultural areas, and different levels of ceiling like this gravel bodies, which is some kind of semi-sealed uh, surfaces but also the full sealed services like asphalt and, and concrete uh, tracks and, 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 and places. Uh, and we also uh, made some uh, um, allocations with, with different spatial levels, like the individual area for site-specific analysis. Can we make a community garden there, for instance? Uh, and then some 
uh, strategical levels like at music municipality level, political district, and uh, the federal state. And uh, you see here just a short portion of how uh, the GIS data looks like. This is uh, a railway track with in red all the associated land and land owned by the OBB and oh, work sorry yeah okay and uh, here you see uh, the result of our GIS intersection you have different uh, colors here representing water surfaces this is agricultural land green land but also very tiny shrub areas uh, we were able to identify and we made then uh, analysis about the ceiling uh, level or percentage of ceiling. You see here uh, a chart for whole Austria. Um, we have approximately 50% really unsealed and then different levels of, of ceilings. Like slightly scenes, uh, sealed means the railroad gravel bodies or additional gravel areas and uh, the sealed areas are, as I told before, the parking and traffic areas and building. So there is a huge potential to use to promote things like biodiversity, uh, nature-based solutions and other uh, strategies. You also see here, this is just to give you a quick impression, and I think this is comparable to other European countries. Uh, you have here an area a composition of the different federal states of, of Austria. And you see, when you look, for instance, at, at Vienna, which is in the middle, in the, in the last row, you have, we have a much higher amount of ceiling. Well, no matter, we have much more tracks with much more infrastructure there. Also in federal states like Lower Austria, which is in the middle above, uh, we have a higher share because there are those high speed uh, lines, which needs much more amount of, of, of uh, area. We have also countries uh, with a high share of uh, alpine regions like, like Vorarlberg or, or Tyrol, uh, there you have a very high share of forest areas because uh, there are large forests owned by the Austrian uh, Federal Railways uh, to prevent uh, the rail body itself from uh, slope slides or avalanches or, or something like this. Out of this uh, analysis, we created different case studies uh, and wanted to identify the potentials and uh, different sites uh, for community gardens as a part of social interactions and social promotion, the management of invasive alien species, uh, then grazing strategies along railway areas as a part of uh, extensive management, local production, as well as biodiversity promotion and renewable energy development. These are now, as time is running, just few short highlights uh, I want to give you. We have done much more work uh, on, on that. Uh, we always have to, to try to identify um, a, a more holistic approach, how a different strategy can contribute uh, to different levels. And uh, Yannick told in the beginning, we are in the middle of nowhere. I don't agree with that. I think we're in the middle of that, what I would call inter and transdisciplinarity. Yeah? We are used to think in sectors. And uh, if we really want to uh, promote sustainable development, we have to think at a more holistic and more inter and transdisciplinary level. So um, in the case of community gardens, we have a high social dimension, we have integrative effects, we have uh, a land which can be used by people who don't own gardens or have own private property. Uh, we have a kind of an experience of nature, which is very important, especially for people living uh, in cities. And we have also a knowledge transfer of different practices of biodiversity support, extensive gardening, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We have an ecological dimension like uh, ecosystem services promotion or biodiversity promotion in, in the cities. And we have also an economic dimension for the railways. We have, uh, if we give uh, land to the, to the people, uh, they will manage it. And 
the railways don't have to manage it and they care for it there is also a high increase of the image value it's you can use it as for a newspaper report uh, you have it's, it's it's good for for public relations and and the image as well uh, here is just as it was a case study, uh, we, we went to a, a specific site which were identified using the GIS data as suitable in, in Vienna. These are visualizations we have done with that. Uh, we have also figured out different synergy effects like uh, shading using PV installations, uh, which produces energy that people can use then for instance for watering or something like this. Um, energy they need uh, to maintain the site. We have uh, aspects of environmental education, like uh, information uh, panels about, well, bees in the city or different, uh, different uh, species who can uh, support uh, biodiversity. Uh, due to the use, also restriction of, of, of alien species because it's under maintenance uh, as well. Uh, and uh, at the uh, social level, supporting local initiatives and uh, a high uh, potential for identity building. Here is just another visualization of that. The second one uh, is not a really site specific, but a general topic, uh, the alien invasive species management. Uh, we have done a comprehensive analysis using different um, databases, which are available for Austria, but also for Europe or, or a global level, like, like uh, the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. And we overlapped those with the OBB sites and, well, uh, found out different shares and, and, and impacts of uh, uh, invasive alien species. And we also compared this to different uh, study works uh, and calculations that there is, it is not just a threat of biodiversity is also a huge amount of money that uh, will be needed to uh, maintain uh, those sites and to overcome those alien species uh, development because we're always talking about diversity and the railway lines which are good contributing for network but they are also a network uh, for the spread of uh, invasive alien uh, species so um, as a prevention and management strategies, we, we identified local control actions at individual communities, so also this community building uh, stuff, I would say, but also extensive management like grazing with, with sheep or other management. But there is also a high importance to communicate those things uh, across employees, but also across uh, railway users and to involve them for example, using citizen science actions or other information platforms, um, which can be installed on smartphones and, and uh, gave information. Uh, the third one, the grazing uh, case study, uh, you see that there is a high interaction with all those different uh, case studies. So it's, uh, it could be an invasive alien species strategy. Uh, but due to this uh, extensive management, also a great driver for biodiversity promotion and also supporting at the social level, again, small scale and local agriculture, uh, depending on the region with different uh, grazing animals. We have done uh, some research about the legal aspects. Uh, indeed, you, you will need some uh, fences, you, meet, you, you need uh, infrastructure depending on, 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 on the railway track, if it's a high speed track or, or, or some, some side, side railway. You can also combine it with energy production, maybe you've heard about agrivoltaic, so the combination of uh, PV production and uh, some kind of agricultural practice. Uh, there is also a high potential for communicating and informing local population and, and educational uh, topics. But at least you will have some conflicts as well. We have fences. Fences are disturbing the free access to landscapes. Um, and also, especially in, in densely settled areas, there can be issues with other animals like dogs, uh, etc. Here is just another image of the visualization. And this is now the last a case study I'm talking about renewable energy 
Um, we've heard a lot about the contribution or the potential of transport infrastructure in general for renewable energy production. And there is a potential. We can't solve the energy problem just by making a PV tunnel over highways or, or somewhere else. But uh, there is at least a potential. And I think it's also important to communicate this and also as a railway company to identify the potentials where we can use um, renewable energy uh, to uh, support their own infrastructure or to support uh, the renewable energy transition. And yeah, there are different aspects or different applications. You can put it on the green land as a ground mounted structure, which uh, is often conflicting other uh, utilizations like agricultural production. Uh, but it can also be, if managed properly as uh, through the extensification of land, uh, could be a driver and supporter for biodiversity. Uh, especially in urban fabrics and across the railway stations, we have seal surfaces like, like parking places or forecourts where it can also produce some uh, positive shading effects and, and weather protection it can also be used. You see it here uh, with wooden structures, not those technical PV installation, those boring ones, but also to, to attract uh, uh, the places itself. Um, yeah, and you can combine it with e-charging stations and et cetera, et cetera. Well, here's just a, a rough um, uh, visualization of how dams, uh, south-sided dams can be used uh, for those ground-mounted PV. And we have also out of the GIS data, it's in German, but just to give you an, an, an impression what we, we can do now with, with the data, so that you can make some rough estimations about the costs uh, and the incomes you can generate out of if you have different fees for uh, costs for energies or, or fees for, for providing the energy and also a comparison, for example, for different CO2 uh, potentials uh, compared to different uh, energy production strategies like water, wind, biomass, uh, gas or, or, or coal. Um, you can use this uh, like sliders and, and uh, yeah, to, to calculate here or, or develop strategies. Yeah? Uh, the effects are also, can also be seen on different levels, like economic effects, like social effects, uh, the visualization of renewable energy, the association to railway stations, combining with uh, e-charging, uh, et cetera, et cetera, but also ecological effects like the contribution to energy transition and those possible synergies. So I'm almost at the end. Uh, what we have seen is that it is, especially for the case of Austria, possible to really produce a high resolution data in terms of, of spatiality and, and, and thematical resolution uh, for whole Austria at least, and special for, for the ÖBB areas. And, and we have seen that it is a really great resource also for future topics to address different aspects of land development, land management, land utilization in terms of sustainable uh, development. Um, this is just a rough summary, but we've also associated all those case studies and potentials to different sustainable development goals. So this is just a rough overview in the end. Uh, you see that uh, just those small stripes of railway areas or railway companioning areas can, can contribute at least to a lot of uh, sustainable development goals and can address very different, highly interacting and interdisciplinary topics at economical, ecological and social level. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>